Today we're going to create a floral illustration with type in Adobe Illustrator. Let's begin. First we start with the type tool. Write out your word and choose your font. I've chosen Believe for my word and Bebus for my font. Draw a gray rectangle behind the text and set the fill color of the text to white. Lock these objects in your layers panel for now. Using the blob brush tool, I'm going to draw out my basic design. I've set the brush to four points with pressure enabled. My goal is to have vines and leaves intertwining the text. Draw and doodle all over your text on a new layer. You can change the design later if you want. Add leaves, big and small, and colorful flowers too. Some parts of these shapes will be behind your text while others will be in front of it. Get messy and expressive at this stage. You can tighten up your design later. I'm going to jump ahead to my completed sketch design which I created earlier. My sketch will serve as a guide for my full illustration. Reduce your sketch layer's opacity and lock it in the Layers panel. Zoom in. On a new layer, use the drawing tool of your choice to begin recreating the leaves in Vector. I'm using the pencil tool whose fidelity is set to smooth. Draw and trace leaves from your sketch. Take your time to recreate each shape. I like to start in the upper left corner for illustrations like these. Select your leaves and change the fill color to green. Then, in the gradient panel, set the fill color to a linear gradient that goes from green to dark green. I like for my greens to have a bit of blue in them. You can choose whatever colors you want. Use the gradient tool to angle your gradient as you see fit. I want the darker color toward the center of my design and lighter colors toward the outside. For my flowers, I'll set their fill color to a linear gradient that goes from coral to light orange. I like to keep designs like this fairly simple in terms of color choices. You can, of course, add as many colors and designs as you want. This is just the start of fantastic floral illustrations. Let's continue creating leaf shapes around the composition. I like to take one type of design at a time, so I broke down my designs into leaves, vines, and flowers for the main components. Since we were already working with gradients, newly drawn shapes should have the same leaf gradient used previously. You'll likely need to run around your composition with the gradient tool, though, and fix those angles. Make sure objects are closed and as smooth or complex as you want them to be. Use the pencil tool or even the blob brush tool to draw vines and stems. Running on ahead, I've drawn my leaves, vines, and flowers. Vary your flower shapes. Consider looking at tropical flowers of all sorts to create fun and beautiful shapes. Create flowers and leaves that draw the viewer's eye around the composition. Finally, you may want to unite some of the leaves and vines that are close together in the composition. You can do so in the Pathfinder panel. I hid my sketch layer and pasted a new instance of my text above my design. The background and old text layer are locked in the Layers panel. We want to decide what parts of the text are behind and in front of the text. Expand your copy text under Object, reduce its opacity to 30% or so, and zoom in. We're going to get the floral design to weave in and out of the text. Select your first letter in one of the leaf objects. You have to decide if you want it above or below the text. Use the Shape Builder tool to unite the parts of the leaf with the letter that you want behind the letter. I want this vine to weave in and out of the B and E. So the left half will be behind, middle will be above, and the right part will be behind again. I have to unite these three sections of the E and vine together to get that effect. It's simple but can be time-consuming. For complex sections, feel free to select more than two objects at a time. Sometimes you may unite shapes and find your united shape change color. Simply change it back to the color you want. Repeat this process all over your design. And feel free to redraw parts of your design that may not have fit previously. I want this vine to snake around the E. I redrew the vine shape, uniting it with some of the objects near it in the Pathfinder panel. After adjusting the gradient angle, I united the top edge with the E, one part of the middle, and a small bit near the bottom. Now it really looks like the vine is wrapped around the letter. Let's jump ahead again. After figuring out these new shapes, I added a simple solid drop shadow to my leaves and flowers. This is entirely optional. 
Next, I want to render the leaves and flowers. Using the pencil tool, I drew shadow shapes on each of the leaves. Cast shadows, form shadows, and even designs like veins in the leaves. My gradient is set to dark green at 100% opacity to 0% opacity. Some of the shapes are set to multiply in the transparency panel too. Play around with these settings and shapes as you see fit. Draw as many or as few as you want in order to make your floral design pop out from the text and background. Use the gradient tool to adjust the angle of your linear gradient shapes. I want my darker, opaque colors closer to the text and lighter, transparent colors further away. Layer as many shapes as you want, too. I like to paint with gradient vector shapes, personally. It's fun. Continue on with this technique around your composition, rendering any leaves or flowers as you see fit. It can be a tedious process, but it's well worth it for the final product. One final jump to our final result. Now you have the tools and techniques you need in order to create fun and fantastic floral text illustrations. Thank you for watching.